thanks for thanks for taking the time to speak to us today. Very very much appreciated. Yeah, no problem. So, I mean, I suppose for some of our audience who don't know um, yourself, um, probably a bit a bit a bit background would be useful. Um, obviously, sort of started your early career in marketing and and direct marketing when it was a relatively new concept, I suppose. Um, and I, I through a varied background, I think you've been a founder, worked in a listed business, done growth, scale up, M and A, even a bit of turnaround and restructuring, and now a non-exec of a number of private and investor-backed businesses in digital e-commerce and also fintech. So I mean, it's it's great that these businesses can now benefit from your wide range of of experience. I, I suppose a couple of things that have run throughout your career and I suppose the things that we'd like to touch on today is that you've been involved in businesses generally that have been quite people heavy so number of sort of agency consultancy type businesses and then also businesses that have very much been data orientated and I suppose data now is much more up the agenda than it probably was when you first sort of started so I think there's a, there's a couple of areas that we'd like to cover and if we can take the data one first you've, you've obviously worked in a number of businesses where data has been a key part of of the business how can businesses use data to sort of drive and create value in the in the current world okay I, probably just 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 step back a little bit to when i first started using data and and, and data you know i worked for financial services i was i was at uh, first direct was was where i first got my introduction to data and um yeah at that time data was very much used as a marketing resource it was used for direct marketing and and the data rich kind of companies were financial services businesses direct mail businesses they had a lot of data and they were using it with the credit reference agencies like like experian who were able to supplement that and and that was you know that that was kind of the cutting edge of data at that time and starting to use it to understand how you could manage customers and the notion of customer journeys but you know I, I think things have changed quite quite dramatically really because um you know now everybody's got a lot of data you know they've got data really because you know they're online in one way or another if, even if it's just a website um They've got data from the sort of ERP systems that they've they've got. They've got data from the financial systems, They've got data from the HR systems. <laughs> They're awash with data in a way that they certainly hadn't been. And, and, you know, the ability to join that up and to harness the power of it is there, but is often sort of laying sort of latent within, within a lot of businesses. So I think there's sort of two areas um, really where businesses can 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 generate value from data one is just using the data that already exists within the businesses in all those kind of systems to really I guess improve their performance whether it's sort of looking at you know strategically what what sort of clients should, should they be attracting uh, or how they attract them you know looking at their marketing you know how can they uh, uh, make that more effective or efficient um looking at the whole operating model you know how 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 are their process how do their processes work how should they uh, are they getting the utilization uh, that they want particularly in people businesses and i think um you know that that for me has been probably of the last 10 years the most interesting part that suddenly you know data was seen as a thing you did in addition to running the business whereas now i actually think really good businesses the data is actually fundamental to them actually performing and um you know that's that that has been a real a real change you know so you know and i think with um, if I look at the, the, the businesses I, I, I work with and some of the ones that I sort of um, do, do projects for, it, you know, a, a lot of that now, if you look at the data they hold about their clients, it's brilliant. You know, people can start to understand them. They can understand what their behaviours are in terms of what, what they've done with them. They can start to map them organisationally so they can start to understand who they should interact with. They can speak, and the more sophisticated ones can start to understand how profitable the work they do for them is. Um, they Marketing effectiveness now, I mean, you know, a lot of that is online. Um, um, but but understanding that is, is really good. You know, a lot of people have really moved forward in their ability to do 
more sophisticated, more personalized marketing because of the likes of a LinkedIn um, I'm telling you that, or, or through other social media, through Twitter, through 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 Facebook. Um, you know, it, it's really changed the way they do that. Um, and uh, but with that comes multiple channels. So the, the complexity <laughs> at one level within each channel is quite high. But when you're looking at a marketing strategy, which has several, suddenly it, it rockets. Um, yeah. So, so it's, I suppose it's been interesting that data has gone from being that sort of back office resource that was kind of a necessity to now yeah. be a tool that can actually drive growth in a business. And it's interesting because we see it being used, you know, a lot in e-commerce, a lot in financial services. But now we've even got manufacturing clients who are using customer data, using supply yeah. chain data to make decisions within their their sort of business. So absolutely, um, it's kind of absolutely. Started to it started to accrue a value in its own right, hasn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. And and I do think once, um, and, and and particularly when you're looking at businesses who then go on a sort of a buy and build sort of strategy, I think if if that if that uh, that business has actually got harnessed the power of its data in all those different elements and has got a good operating model, it understands. You know, it understands its workflows, it understands its utilisation of people, it understands its sort of profitability, it understands performance of individuals and teams and all of that. If you can, if you can create that, then acquiring another business and using that same um, sort of building block to, to, to put into those, those businesses, the performance you can get just by adopting that, that method is, is really high. So, you know, I think, I think it's a really, really strong um a strong suit for, for a business to, to to have yeah and i think we've seen a number of clients who probably have not put enough attention on sort of i suppose perhaps customers that are sort of underutilized mm. i think that's often something that gets missed is that the focus is on the customers that are always that are always buying or subscribing and actually you know there's quite often a big chunk of a database that somebody's actually not doing anything with there's no content yeah. being driven towards them which you know you can have some immediate upside if you if you acquire a business and find that there's a a latent data set there that you can actually then take some advantage of yeah and i think the other thing i've, I've seen is pricing where you're looking at, at clients and you know once you start to really understand more about um you know in, in, you really your, your operation and really how much it's costing you to deliver whatever products or services you're doing if you can get to that then started to understand it by client you can start to address pricing and again that can have a massive impact because quite often you know it's that it's that operator effect you know 80 percent of your value comes from 20 percent of your customers and and uh yeah that that can be quite a dangerous thing um you know and, and, and so yeah so you know using that data is really strong and then you know, I think the second thing is really for, for a lot of companies is to start to look at could they create a data proposition out of what they already do um and and the, you know the data the data revenue streams and profit streams are probably the most high valuable the, the highest value multiples uh, in the industry from a, from a sort of a an m a point of view right and and you know you're starting to see quite a few businesses looking at how they do that and, and you know one element of that is actually just helping other businesses do all the things we've just talked about you know going in and, and with those sort of um experienced data consultants shall we say um to help them do that or maybe actually developing tools to help them do that too and then suddenly you're into having a product um and those tools might be just plugins to other other, other tools like zero for example accounting tools and suddenly you're developing you, you've got into developing your own data business and uh, you know i think from my experience of running you know quite a large data science uh, uh, business you know that was very people oriented sort of 10 15 years ago now it's very technology led so you know a lot of those things you know, you're looking at actually developing technology to solve those problems rather than just having smart smart people um so so that's how to develop then different revenue stream it starts to develop almost like a SaaS revenue stream yeah and, and you're into a whole different ball game then but again that's got value um and then the other one that's really interesting a lot of people have been very successful is just really taking information that they've got they might have be collecting a lot of information from lots of lots of different sources in as part of what they do 
and then sort of um, depersonalizing that and then collating it to provide industry insight and selling it as data into, into different businesses in, in a sector. And that's been a really successful model. Um, and particularly, we are joining data up from different sources. You know, everyone's got their sort of wall gardens of data now, whether it be Facebook or, or whatever. So it's quite difficult to get that overall yeah. view. Um, so I do think it's really interesting. The only sort of Achilles heel in all of that wonderful, wonderful strategy is data scientists are, are as rare as hen's teeth and, um, and can cost and cost an awful lot. It's a real rare talent resource. And with, you know, obviously the advent of AI and, and the, you know, and, and those people being drawn to those really high tech businesses, it's very, very difficult to attract and keep that kind of talent. Yeah, that's um, yeah. It's not lost on us, given clearly what we do. That that, that people resource bit in those sorts of areas, date, whether it be data driven or CRM, you know, social media data are yeah. all very much in demand. So um, yeah, interesting.